What's up guys, Steve the Audio Guy here. Thanks for coming back to my channel. And as always, please hit the subscribe button. Today, I wanted to talk about a topic that I think about a lot with my little cover band. And I mean, we're a little cover band. We have 500 followers on Facebook. We play all the local bars here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we are nothing special. But what we do uh, on the back end for our quote unquote show we try to be as professional as possible. We have a rider, a technical rider that we send before we go to play a venue that specifies all of our uh, do's and don'ts for the venue. We we travel with a trailer. We have our own, you know, PA system. We have a lighting system. Here's our stage plot. Here's our input list, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it, it really, I don't understand why bands don't take more time to kind of prepare their. Uh, live show wh whether it's yes you have to learn the songs and that's very time consuming but also bands today can sound and look really good and have a extraordinary production value um, with the tools that are available today right you have LED lights that are uh, reasonably priced on Amazon you have that are all DMX controlled so you can actually program them it doesn't have to just be a light going crazy like you're at some kind of club um, it can be your whole band on in-ears so that there's no external wedges that are um, muddying up the front of house mix um, it could be no guitar cabinets or bass cabinets on stage you could all be plugging in direct um, to you know to DI's and giving a, a clean signal to the front of house and monitor mix um, everything from having an analog split so that if there is an external front of house mixer and the band isn't mixing themselves you can hand them a split of all the inputs and all your in-ears stay the same right that's gonna that's gonna cut down all your wedges too if you're using wedges stay the same because that's gonna cut down on load in time you know it's just little things like this that are gonna make um, the band more professional and sound and look a lot better but anyway um, with that said, I'm going to show you guys my rack and what we use with my band and I hope it gives you some ideas for your band and uh, enjoy. So this is a control rack and basically uh, what it does or a lot of bands will call it an IEM rack or just it'll, it'll be a rack with some control elements in it for the band. Um, and this is the rack I use for my cover band here in Charlotte, North Carolina. and. I've built it for the things that, that I need, right? So obviously we use an X32 for our mixer. Um, we have an amplifier here that um, powers the subwoofers that we bring into small bars and clubs um, when we need to provide our own PA, which is most of the time. Um, my band actually doesn't have a guitar player, so what you see right here is a Mac Mini and we run tracks for the guitar parts um, and use Ableton Live to play back um, tracks. And so this guy runs, um, you know, Ableton Live. It also uh, runs um, a program so that I can uh, tap into the Raspberry Pi here, which is a, a single board computer. This little Raspberry Pi actually runs our light show. Um, so there's a program running uh, on this guy called QLC Plus, which is really cool. It's basically a graphical um, lighting controller. Um, and I'll show you guys that later. Um, and then this is just a patch panel for, um, you know, antennas for the wireless units, uh, my in-ear unit my uh, wireless guitar unit, um, and then a drawer to keep everything in. And then obviously the X32, um, we have that patched for all of our inputs in the back. Um, and again, I, I already explained the uh, amplifier here. Um, we have a little pass-through, so pass-through cables. And what you'll see here um, is another patch panel. Um, this first, uh, quarter inch that's where my wireless guitar uh, or I should say my my quarter inch going to my guitar pedal um, comes out of into the guitar pedal um, there's the NL4 connectors for the subwoofers 
I have my bandmates IEM mixes um, right there so that we can run a hard line to my drummer and a uh, singer uses an X5U4 system for her in-ears. Uh, we have our PA left and right, so that's the main out um, from the mixer. And then this is something new. I recently purchased an S32 to expand our, our I.O. capability, which we don't need. We only have 16 channels, but uh, this is AES-50. So for those of you who don't know what AES-50 is, it's a digital audio protocol. Um, I can't remember the channel count. Um, that, that it can handle, but it's significant. It, it's what um, most of the Midas and Behringer products use to carry their digital audio for their I.O. boxes. Um, and the other thing we have here is a little Bluetooth receiver. So when I'm at a gig, uh, I'll stream uh, from my phone, Spotify, or something in between our sets. And then this obviously patches into the mixer here. Um, but this last piece is from Seismic Audio. They make, uh, you know, they import products from China. They make, um, you know, some good, affordable, uh, what I would call ancillary equipment. I've never tried their speakers or any of their other products, but I have a few of their ancillary products, such as uh, this patch bay. And if you'll notice this, uh, this rack uh, drawer and, and actually the rack itself is from seismic audio this is a 16 space rack um, and they have splits and so what happens is all of the inputs from the stage actually come into this split um, and there's 16 inputs um, and we patch in obviously I've got them all labeled you know kick snare hat Tom one two three overhead overhead and then our click track actually comes from a an audio interface um, behind the rack and I'll show you that in a minute uh, bass um, sometimes we bring a cajon and acoustic we do an acoustic tune um, there's our tracks that's also coming in from um, the audio interface in the back of the rack and then our three vocals uh, we bring them in so that's the front of the rack um, and everything each piece of the rack has its own specific uh, task. And uh, let's check out the back. All right, here's the back of the rack. And basically you can see in there the RF units. There's the power supplies for each RF unit. Um, I picked a couple of these cyber power. Um, I guess that well people say they're power conditioners. I mean, I think if you open them up, you'd find that they're just wiring to break out all the Edison plugs. Uh, they have a little 15 amp, bra uh, you know, breaker or reset switch on them. So whether they're actually filtering the power, I don't think that's the case. So people want to say these are surge protectors. It has a surge LED on there. I think maybe if the breaker uh, exceeds 15 amps, you know, this guy will probably pop on, but I haven't really had any problems with them. They're pretty good. They're pretty reasonably priced. They're they're pretty shallow product. I don't know if you can really see in there, but they're only about, I don't know, four inches, six inches deep. So, and they have, um, you know, six plugs on the front here and six on the back. So quite, quite a bit of access for, for Edison connectors if you need to power stuff up. Um, so I'll start at the bottom here. Um, on the bottom, we have our split. So hold on, I gotta pull this out. So basically, um, that split on the bottom, what it does, the, the split that we saw on the front, what it does is it takes all of the stage inputs and it creates two copies, okay? One copy is right here in front of us and they're all labeled. You can see how they're all uh, numbered and we actually put, I've actually color coded them and put, put labels as to what, tr what you know, input uh, goes to what channel here on the split, but there's 16 channels. And this is the copy that we would send to say uh, a house PA. So if there was a house PA that we were, were um, you know, encountering, 
when we were playing, we would give them a copy of all of our inputs off the stage for them to mix for the crowd, okay? The second copy goes to the X32. And it's an exact replica of the 16 channels. And basically this is known as an analog split. Um, in a typical situation where we don't have a house PA, we're mixing our own PA from the X32. Um, and you can see uh, the main out left and right, which go to the front panel that I showed you earlier. Um, the RCA connectors are, is that Bluetooth uh, receiver I showed you. There's our three mix outputs for all of our in-ears. Um, this purple one here is actually going to the internal um, RF unit uh, for my ears, and the other two get split out to the front. Uh, there's an ethernet jack, that's for control. Um, that goes to a Wi-Fi, um, a home Wi-Fi router that we carry with us. Um, you know, it's nothing industrial or super, super, um, robust, but it works for our application. Um, and then all the inputs, right? That copy of the split that go in there. So that's the X32 rack. Oh, and there's the AES 50. I don't know if you can see that in there. That AES 50 is coming out and going to the front of the rack. Um, the other thing we have in here is our DMX splitter or amplifier. Um, we run a controlled light show um, and we send DMX from the Raspberry Pi to the network and then from the network back to DMX or I should say fr from the network to DMX and then we split it out um, to this box right here and I think you can get these on Amazon for like 30 bucks. I mean they're not expensive. Um, and it's worked really well. I've been using this thing for over a year now um, and it's it's been great. There's actually another four outputs, DMX outputs, on the back of this. So if you needed to split eight, eight ways, you could do that. Um, and then we have another cyber power um, you know, box here so that we can plug all of our light trees in um, to each one of these. Um, and then down here we have a little Behringer um, audio interface and this case takes care of our tracks and our click track so I think the left is our click track and the right output out of this is our the, the actual tracks like the guitar tracks that we use for the band um, and then of course uh, you can kind of see it in there we've got the amplifier QSC um, QSC power amplifier so that is the back of the rack um, and I'm gonna show you guys uh, what we have going on on the top. Here is the top of the rack. And basically what you're seeing here is uh, this Macintosh, or I should, should say Mac Mini, um, broken out to a display. And this is a pretty cool little, little display. As you can see, it's very thin. It's powered off of a USB-C connector. Um, and then there's a can't remember it's not a micro I think it's a mini a mini HDMI there's two different ones there's micro and then there's mini and this one I think takes the mini but um, you can get these on Amazon for like 150 bucks um, and so far so good um, when we're done at the night uh, at, at, after our gig um, we basically pack this you know this keyboard this mouse and this flat screen display into the rack and and it kind of rolls on its own the other thing we have here is our network um, our, our network router um, and basically everything is controlled through the network so you can see that blue Ethernet cable is actually taking um, uh, our lighting control over the network and sending it out of the router to this um, box the EDMX1 Pro by DMX King and it takes the Ethernet and basically turns it into DMX. Um, I believe it's Artnet which is running over the, the network and then turns it into DMX and this uh, DMX cable actually goes back to our DMX split and then out to our different light trees uh, to control our show. Um, but the, the brown, the red, and the orange cable are our different devices. So one of them is the X32, one of them is the Raspberry Pi, 
and I cannot remember for the life of me what the other one is. Raspberry, oh, the Mac Mini. Yep, the Mac Mini, because that, because the Mac Mini is um, controlling both Ableton, and uh, we're also sending some lighting commands through Ableton over MIDI, um, and I'll show you guys that later. But that pretty much is our rack for my band called Losing Jenny. Hey guys, thanks for watching today. I'll leave some links in the description to Seismic Audio, QLC Plus, and a couple of other items that I talked about today. I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you next time.